Well, hello everyone, welcome back from our break. Our next talk for today is going to be from a couple of folks at Microsoft, and they'll be talking about using FreeBSD with Hyper-V on ARM64. Hi, everyone. So I am Shaurodip, and me and Oi, Oi Hu from Microsoft, we are working on bringing up uh, FreeBSD on Azure ARM64 architecture. So currently this work is still under process. We have done the phase one and uh, that uh, work we'll be discussing here and phase two is uh, on the way. So without further delay, I will just share my presentation here. I hope the uh, presentation is clear and visible. So let me know if there is any problem with the presentation. We can see it, although it's in uh, preview mode rather than full screen. Okay, okay. Uh, let me try to make it full screen. Give me a minute. No, problem, no worries. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it is, uh, I'm going to find the view button because of the task bar of the zoom on top. <laughs> uh, it can be done from this side out. Screen, see the slides. I'm not sure uh, how to get the view button here. It is not coming here, actually. Uh, anyway, uh, so, yeah. So, uh, in Microsoft, uh, we are working on FreeBSD for last couple of years. We have already got FreeBSD on x86 platform of Azure. And as Microsoft has already decided and started offering ARM64 on Azure, so uh, on track with that, we are working on bringing up FreeBSD on that. For that, the work is mostly on the Hyper-V drivers of uh, FreeBSD. So, yeah, so the, uh, this is the current architecture of FreeBSD, uh, sorry, uh, of Hyper-V in FreeBSD. If you see, uh, according to the new bus architecture, we have got uh, Nexus device and child of the Nexus, we have SAPI. And under SAPI, we have got VMBus Race and SAPI container. VMBus Race owns the Swiss Race IRQ resource and SAPI container owns SwissRace MIM from the SAPI table. Under SAPI container, we have got VMBus and store VSC, NET VSC, HVUtils, and PCIV, that is VMBus PCIV. Under that, we have PCI. Let's go to the next slide. So this was the uh, earlier or current existing Hyper-V device driver layout inside FreeBSD source code. We have VMBus inside which the uh, all the VMBus related uh, source codes are present. Inside that we have uh, currently AMD64 and I386, which were having the uh, x86 uh, specific hyper call entries and VMBus IDT vectors. Then we had stored VSC for the synthetic SCSI controller driver, NET VSC for synthetic network controller driver, PCIB for the PCI bridge driver for SRIOV as well as pass through for the accelerated networking. Then we have 
input where we have the synthetic keyboard drivers, utilities, uh, where the uh, time synchronization driver and key, uh, key value driver are present. And then we have include where the header files, generic header files are present, which are exposed by the FIMBUS for the applications. Now we have uh, modified it uh, to uh, accommodate the ARM uh, based changes which we have done. So now we have included a new directory inside Vimbus that is arc64, which is containing Vimbus arc64.c, hyper-v underscore rake dot h, hyper-v macdep h, hyper-v macdep c, and hyper-v arc64. These files are created which contain the specific code bases for ARM64 architecture. So VMBus ARC64 contains new interrupt handler, handler, which we have introduced now uh, for uh, ARC64. That setup and tear down codes are inside this ARC64, VMBus ARC64.c. Then we have Hyper-V ARC64.c, which contains a code for Hyper-V identification as well as the page setup. Then we have Hyper-V MacTape.c, which contains new hyper calls for ARM64 Hyper-V. And we have Hyper-V Rake.h, which contains ARM64 specific synthetic MSR values. Now let's go to the next slide. Along with that, we have also introduced a new full directory for x86, that is a x86, the name is x86, which contains VMBus x86.c, Hyper-V x86.c, Hyper-V rake.h, and Hyper-V magdep.h. These are applicable for both i386 as well as for AMD64 architecture. That's why we have created this uh, generic name x86 here. And also we have introduced new files in uh, common directory of VMBus, that is Hyper-V common rake.h, which contains the common synthetic register, uh, MSR values for the Hyper-V, which are applicable for both x86, uh, x86 as well as for the ARC64, ARM64. We have taken this approach to re-architect the code base to avoid the duplicacy or the redundancy of the code and to make it for the modular. While we started doing this work, one of the big challenge which we have got was uh, how to communicate with the Hyper-V for the hyper calls. Because uh, in case of x86, we have got WRMSR and RDMSR, which is not present in uh, ARM64. So we need to use uh, to different commands, which is HV call set VP registers, hyper call, and HV call set VP register hyper call for setting and getting the MSR values. And to do that, we need to use ARM SMCCC HVC AVIs. As we can see from the picture on the right side, that in ARM, use the space runs on the EL0 kernel on the L1 and hypervisor or here in case of uh, Azure, the Hyper-V runs on the EL2. So from EL1 to EL2, the communication happens through ARM SMCCC HVC. In FreeBSD, we had uh, ARM SMCCC HVC, but it was still the version level one. But we required 1.2 to access the registers beyond A0 to A3. The limitation of uh, SMCCC version one is that it can, you can, you are only allowed to access the registers of Hyper-V through a V from A0 to A3. But when we are doing the get VP registers, the values get set after A3. So it's from A4 to A7. So, we, for this purpose, we have implemented SMCCC 1.2, and these are available for all users. 
if we want to see the code changes, these are present in the below mentioned links. Uh, so I'm going to the next slide. Now, as I mentioned, we have Hyper-V.C. So Hyper-V is, uh, Hyper-V identification or Hyper-V loading happens during the sys init of, uh, when we are going for the sys init uh, of the Hyper-V, uh, Hypervisor. So sys init level Hypervisor, when we are going that time, this uh, Hyper-V identification happens. And there uh, we have, uh, introduced this, use this uh, new hyper calls to get the hyper features, the recommendations, as well as to identify the platform, whether it is hyper V or not. Without that, non hyper V platforms will get into trouble because we are using this uh, um, SMCCC 1.2 to set and get the attributes. And those are not, uh, available in older platforms or 32-bit uh, platforms. So to avoid that, we need to identify the platform. Now, in case of x86, we had CPU ID. Using that, we can identify, and we were identifying that whether the platform is um, Hyper-V or not. Now, as it is not present in this, so we had another small challenge. So what we have done this time, that we have uh, we try to use SCPI FADT, that is the fixed added description table to identify. So in SCPI FADT, uh, in SCPI version six, we have an attribute hypervisor ID to which we can get what is the hypervisor ID, which in our case is MS hyper V. Now, another challenge was when the hyper V is getting loaded, that time SCPI is still not mapped to the from the physical memory to the uh, kernel, uh, the kernel memory. So we had to do that, and we have uh, then using the mapped address, we get the hypervisor ID, and we overcome the challenge of identifying the Hyper-V. Another thing which is different in very much in case of uh, the way x86 was working in Hyper-V uh, previously is that in uh, x86, we were using synthetic timer of Hyper-V, but in uh, ARM, Hyper-V does not provide the synthetic timer. So at uh, Hyper-V, our host actually tries to use the uh, ARM architecture uh, timer counter. So we uh, use the generic counter implementation of FreeBSD for the timer events and we uh, taken out this Hyper-V uh, time synchronization, all these codes from the Hyper-V.c. We have kept it inside the x86 folder directory and generic Hyper-V does not now contain this changes. As uh, also uh, in this, uh, we have also got the page setup. So we have this uh, VADDR and PADDS setup. Those are still there, but in x86, we had also uh, this uh, page setup for hypercall context, which is not applicable because uh, in ARM. So we have moved them in the Hyper-V x86. Going to the next slide. So if we see, this is the, so if we want to understand that in uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, the base, or the most important part is the Vimbus. So through VMBus, guest OS communicates with the host and host offers different information to guest uh, through the channel. What is channel? Channel is nothing but a shared memory between the host and uh, guest. And guest in, in, our, in this case is FreeBSD and child partition. And to synchronize this communication or to uh, notify guest OS, about any channel communication, we use uh, synthetic interrupt or cynic, which comes through this hypervisor. So we uh, had, uh, so already in x86, this synthetic interrupt was implemented. 
but it was done through LAPIC, which I will be discussing in the next slides, which we have moved away from. So in VMBus interrupt handling, uh, in x86, we were using uh, LAPIC and free IDT vector for Hyper-V uh, ISO. In ARM64, VMBus uses the interrupt mentioned in the CRS of a separate table uh, under VMBus. As if you can see in the right side of the slide, we have just taken a snippet from the SCPI DSDT, where we can see that inside uh, VMBus, we have the CRS under which we have got interrupt mention, which is in case of ARM, is 0x12, that is 18 in decimal. Now in uh, x86, this value was 0x5, which is pretty uh, small to use in x86 architecture. So what that time had been done is uh, Fimbus was using uh, LAPIC and using LAPIC, it was uh, setting up the IDT vector by finding a free IDT vector entry. And then Scenic was using that to communicate with the uh, guest OS. In ARM, um, we don't uh, we can we don't, don't uh, have that thing. So we are going we had to use this interrupt mention in the SCPI. So now there was a challenge because of the new bus architecture which I've shown already in the slide one. Uh, this resource in the VM bus code this uh, interrupt resource is owned by a stub or dummy device that is known as VMBus Race, which is a direct child of SCPI. And VMBus is a child of SCPI Sys container, which owns the resource of uh, uh, Sys MEM for the MMIO. This is applicable for the Gen2, by the way, and Gen2 Hyper-V. Because in cause uh, ARM64 offering is on the Gen2, not on the Gen1 Hyper-V. Now to access this resource from the VMBus race, what we have done because we had to use the new bus architectures uh, thing. So an SCPI container we need to use for the MMIU. So we kept that same parent-child relationship, but to allocate the resource from the IR, for the IRQ, we have used this dev class gate device. And from there, once we have got the VMBus uh, race dev handle, we have used that to uh, to pass it for the bus alloc resource any for the sys race IRQ. And then we have introduced three new attributes in VMBus soft C. Uh, that is I race, I cookie, and vector. So the resource which is getting allocated is getting stored in the VMBus soft C I race. I'm going to the next slide. Now, once we have got successfully this IRS resource, what we have done, because we need the actual IRQ number present in the SCPI table. So we had used this RMN or resource manager get virtual to get the IRQ number. And we have set it for ARM. We're setting it in the VMBus IDT fake. Earlier in this IDT fake, it was the uh, 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 IDT vector entry, uh, which were which we are getting through the LAPIC. So in case of ARM, we are getting we are setting it through this IRQ data IRQ. So these changes are in this uh, VMBus arc64.c, and LAPIC based IDT vector setup has been moved in the VMBus x86.c. Now. Uh, currently, we are working on. So now, after these changes, uh, VM uh, Hyper uh, sorry FreeBSD is able to boot up and can get installed on uh, Hyper V or Azure Gen2. But we, as I mentioned, we have this accelerator networking, and for which we use SRIOV and PCI pass through. For that, we have this VMBus PCIB bridge driver. Uh, so we are working right now on getting this PCIB to work on ARM64. There are some certain challenges because the way in x86 
uh, VM bus PCIB was mapping the MSIX was through uh, the Nexus device of x86, which was taking care of MSIX uh, allocation. But in ARM64, we don't have that in the Nexus. So we are going to implement the mapping, the allocation uh, of MSIX inside directly inside the VM bus PCIB without using the dev methods of the parent device. So Hyper-V does not emulate the full search PCIB. It is just for this, as I mentioned, the mapping and the setting up the bars for the SRIV or the password device, which we are uh, getting the MMIU, which we are getting through the SCPI table and handling the PCI configuration space access. So once this uh, VMBus PCIB work is done, we will have SRIOV and VME enabled in FreeBSD on ARM64 Hyper-V as well. So I will, uh, before this, I will just showcase a small demo. So let me share a demo video, which we have, I have already recorded for this. I hope you can see the uh, VLC player here, which I have recorded the video, which I, while I'm playing the video recorded already. So, yep. <clears throat> yep. okay, cool. So as you can see, uh, so uh, here actually I'm setting the uh, boot, uh, uh, set boot serial to get the, uh, all the logs on the party and then verbose boot. So, yeah, boot minus V we have done. And yeah, so as we can see that booting started happening and we have uh, got the uh, FreeBSD installation window and once this is installed, so yeah, I have just cropped that part installation process. Once it is installed, we can see that it will be having this. Uh, we are restarting after the installation. Yeah. So once it is restarted, we will have from the boot from the uh, storage. And yeah, uh, so we are inside the first successful uh, free VSD ARM Hyper V. And we can ping now and the DF manage ace and all those things are working. Yeah, so it is on the ARM64, it is running. So yeah, that's all from my presentation. So yeah, yeah. Thank you everyone for watching this uh, presentation. Yeah, and if you have any questions now, yeah, we can take this, take the questions here. Sure, so I have one question, which is I saw you mentioned um, using SROV for NVMe storage. Are there any other devices that you plan to pass through or is it is that the only one you're currently planning to, to use with SROV? Yeah, there are two things. One is uh, we are network device that is Melanox. Melanox NIC is getting used in uh, Azure. So that will be done through the, that will be coming for the pass through for accelerated networking and uh, NVMe definitely for the storage. Okay. Any other question? I'll, other I'm question? gonna look on IRC and I'll, I'll see if any pop up in the next minute or so. If I'll, I'll relay them if they do. Okay, okay. So yeah, I and you can definitely contact me or way uh, over email. So uh, my email is uh, if I share the screen. Yeah, one minute. Let me share the screen once more. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So this is me and we. Uh, so our email IDs are mentioned here as well as I am uh, available on IRC of on the FreeBSD IRC. So you can ping me there as well. 
and you can contact Ruby as well on the on any questions. Uh, thank you. Thanks for being such a nice audience. Thank you, everyone. I'm stopping the sharing. So we'll go ahead and take our, I think it's our last break of the day. Um, and we have one more talk coming up um, from Pavel talking about invite lists, which are a neat little tool API we have in FreeBSD that came over from as part of the uh, CFS and DTrace work. I know I've used it in Beehive, for example. Um, but yeah, we're going to take our break. Our next, I think it's about a 40 minute break that we'll take and we'll be back um, for our next talk as it is on the schedule. So I'll see you all on the hallway track and we'll be back in a little while.